To my channel I'm Patty I get by Patty Mac makes everywhere online if this is your first time to the channel I would like to say a big hello and welcome I would love to tell you that on this channel we're all about making and baking and quilting and sewing and all those really great handcrafts and if that is something that sounds interesting to you then I invite you to subscribe to the channel while you're here make sure that you hit the notification bell and uh, for everybody like today's video it really helps the channel it helps me and I appreciate it so much I just filmed a video for you all about the holiday projects that I have in mind for you for the season coming up and I just kind of outlined the things that I have planned the things that I am uh, have on my list uh, to make for you and I wanted to give you a heads up so that you know what's coming and that if any of those look interesting or fun to you you can go ahead and grab the supplies as needed or necessary so that when my video comes out you have everything on hand and you can go ahead and make those particular projects but for today's video I just wanted to talk with you about uh, a recent I, I don't like to call it a haul video because that just sounds like I don't know, like you come home with a truckload of stuff. And I never come home with a truckload of stuff because it gets so expensive and I have to mind the budget. Um, so I have a bag, uh, but calling it a bag video, that doesn't really sound interesting. So we'll call it a mini haul. How about that? I went to Joanne, I had my list and I had specific things that I needed for projects I have planned. So this was, this is kind of my strategy. So I listed out what I wanted to make for you on the channel. I knew what I wanted to make. I went through my stash to figure out what I already had and could use so that I could utilize those things first. And then I listed out exactly what I needed for the rest of it because I didn't want to go in and over buy and over shop because it's so easy to go in there. You see everything, you want everything, uh, you wind up overspending, you wind up buying, buying things that you really can't use and then you have to go back because you didn't get what you needed to finish something else. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a really specific list and I still bought a few extras and I'll show you the extra things that I got. Um, I'm kind of just planning ahead, you know, 2020. As I film this, it's it's October of 2020, and things are weird. Everything has been very strange this year, and um, a little bit scary, and I never know what to expect. And uh, I've just decided that I'm going to plan way ahead and have everything that I need on hand to craft for a while because I don't know what's going to happen. None of us do. It's a little bit of a scary space to be living in. We're not really accustomed to that way of life here in the United States, which is where I live and where I'm filming. You know, we're just used to things being um, different and more settled. And right now it's anything but. So I find that the planning the holiday projects takes my mind off of my worries and uh, making sure that I have everything I could possibly need for a few months also uh, helps me as a coping mechanism. So let me show you what I picked up. And plus, you know, to be honest, it just felt really nice to be able to go to the store. I mean, that just feels like a glimpse of normal. You, know, you still have to wear, uh, we have to wear face coverings here in uh, any sort of indoor public environment. So grocery shopping, if I go inside the uh, Lowe's or whatever, hardware store, any of that type of thing, you have to have the face covering when you're inside the store. We don't have to wear them outside, thank goodness, because I think I think the mask is kind of miserable. I'm not a fan of the mask. Um, I'll be glad when that aspect of our life is gone. Just 
being honest. Um, but so you have to wear this thing on your face, but at least I can come and go as I want. I'm so grateful for that because I know that a lot of you can't. And I, um, I really do send my, my thoughts and my prayers out to you because I know it's not easy and I, I don't think I could stand it if I couldn't get out and do what I needed to do. And I'm just grateful I live in a place where I have that freedom. So anyway, going to Joanne's, it just feels like a slice of normalcy and I need that right now because things do not feel normal. And um, I'm going to share just some footage of the inside of the store while I'm talking to you about it. Uh, they are getting in their Christmas fabrics and they have a lot of really fun things. I noticed that uh, most of it is coming now from Pakistan. So a lot of the new prints are Pakistani. They are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, also prints are coming from South Korea and still some from Japan, but I noticed that it was more uh, Pakistan than Japan at this point. I learned on this trip that the licensed character prints, so anything that is a sports team or uh, a Disney or Harry Potter or anything like that, that all comes still from China. And the shipments from China are sort of hit or miss. They don't really know when they're getting or what they're getting or anything like that. So if you uh, really have something you like, like a Minnie Mouse or something or peanuts, and it's in the store when you're there, I would suggest that you grab it because they really honestly don't know if they're going to get it again or when. So, um, you know, if there's something that you can really, uh, that you really love, that you can use, go ahead and get it because uh, nobody knows if these things will come back. It's just kind of a strange way to be living. So one of the projects I have in mind for the season, and it's actually going to be after Christmas because Harry Potter is always big after Christmas. And I needed specific cuts of fabric with colors because as you know if you're a Harry Potter fan each house has a different set of colors. So I wound up getting these to do um, the Slytherin and the uh, the Ravenclaw and both Slytherin and Ravenclaw they have the green and the blue but they also both of them use a gray so I selected this beautiful tree which actually would go this way this beautiful tree as the gray and I just thought that would be really, really super pretty. So I got those for those house colors and um, the greens, the, all of the solids are just on, in my store, all of the solids are on the back wall. So that's where I picked those up and they're generally pretty inexpensive. And uh, when you work with those fabrics, a lot of times they have no salvage. They're, I guess they just make huge runs. So uh, you do want to check green line and you can do that by checking the stretchiness of the fabric so that you know how to lay it out for cutting. Uh, but that's what I got there. And then for the other two houses, which are Hufflepuff, uh, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff and Gryffindor, I got these. Because um, Gryffindor is like um, the burgundy with the gold and then Hufflepuff is a black with a gold. So this is what I selected for those two houses. And I think it's going to be really fun. So it's a mini quilt project and I needed something for uh, the backing. And of course you need a sash and you need a binding. Um, so even though it's a small quilt, it's like a wall hanging, it's still all of the, um, the steps and the parts of a full quilt. It's just smaller. So this is what I picked for my backing. I think it's beautiful. I have looked at this for a couple of years and never gotten any. This is gorgeous cathedral window print. I liked it because all of the houses are represented and it's kind of a bold, large print and I think that will be beautiful on the backing. It's gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. So that's my backing. And I noticed when I went in that they were so like light on the, the Harry Potter prints and that's how I found out from the, um, the woman at the, the cutting counter that um, 
they just weren't getting the shipments and she hadn't seen any new Harry Potter shipments in a while so um, I got that one for my backing. So in the ensuing um, days that followed uh, I was going to get fabric that you know you know how you get this fabric in your mind and you just keep thinking about it and you can't stop thinking about it and then I checked for it on the app and the app was you know we had a sale this week a sale and it was gonna be half off and I was like well I'm gonna go get it if it's half off because it was only gonna be like four ninety nine a yard so I went back for it I couldn't find it but they had Harry Potter fabric that had come in in the meantime uh, so I grabbed a little bit because um, this particular one with the owl with um, head Hedwig I had seen before and I always liked it and I have never bought it so I bought it this time because it's really really cute and I think I could make really cute little bags and I gave you in the uh, Christmas project video a sneak peek of the bag I have planned and I think that would be really cute in it and then this one I have not seen before so I got it isn't that cute? So I kind of broke my cardinal rule of buying stuff that I have no particular plan for. Um, but, you yeah, know, what the heck? I don't know when this is coming back, and I think it's adorable. So I got it. I just bought a yard of each uh, of the last two prints because, you know, with a yard and a, and a small quilting project, you can do a lot. So I got those. These are, these are really cute. There's, you can do a lot with these. Anyway, so that's like all of this Harry Potter stuff I have coming up. Next, I needed something for the small Christmas tree, the fabric tree. I'm going to sew a tree for you from uh, a McCall's pattern that I have. And uh, I wound up getting this, and I just think it's gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? And I think I got... I think I got two yards of this. Yeah, I got two yards because it's it's so beautiful. I love it. So that's coming. I think that's a print that was done in um, Pakistan and it has a lot of colors in it. So like I've told you before, if you're trying to mix uh, colors with a print, you can go on your salvage. And if anything on this salvage is going to work well in combination with this print. And I know that I have that dark green in stash. I have a lot of it. So uh, that would work really well with this. So anyway, the tree is coming. And then I picked up uh, this that I thought was really cute. Uh, because I want to do a sew along with you uh, in December where we make those Christmas tree napkins. I thought that would be fun and I want to do it like a live. So I got this and this. Because when I make those, I like to do a print and a solid. That's just kind of how I keep things in my mind from getting too busy. I just go prints and solids. And I like this because, you know, it's not like a, a perfect solid. It's almost like a batik, but it came off of the keepsake calico wall, and those are generally much less expensive. So, yeah, and of course, you know, you can't go wrong with Christmas trees and gifts on a Christmas tree napkin, so that's what we're going to make. If you watch the channel, you will know that I love pre-cuts. I think they're fun. It's a great way to mix and match those prints, because I think mixing and matching prints is kind of an advanced skill and it can be, I think it can be difficult to get it right. Uh, so with a pre-cut you get everything from a collection and it's all designed to go together and that just makes it easier. So these were on sale at 40% off so I got two of them and they're uh, two fat quarter bundles and each one has uh, five prints. So I got those and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them but I really liked them and this particular one on the green it's got a little bunny rabbit and you don't typically see a bunny rabbit in a Christmas print so I liked that and then it also has a beautiful the stag this in gold 
and I love that mustard yellow and uh, you know the stag imagery that um, motif is really big this year so I got I just got it I couldn't resist it once I saw the bunny rabbit I was like I'm done I have to have that so I'm not sure what I'm doing and I don't know, even know that I'll have time to do anything with it I'm gonna try <laughs> we'll see <laughs> oh. and you know what it goes with this so I could actually pair this with this so maybe we'll do other placemats I have placemats already planned but we could do a different set of placemats I mean why not just why the heck not let's just live it up so then I wound up getting uh, some other fat quarters and they were all on sale which is why I grabbed them and I just I don't know they're such a great size for doing bags and I knew I had those bag projects planned for you and I have more zippered pouches planned in the new year and also like little mini quilts I mean I don't know and you know I'm not usually somebody that likes a lot of heavy black stuff um, I, I usually am more of a color person than uh, neutrals or um, blacks or grays or whatever but I, I just thought like this together was crazy isn't that beautiful and I also got this I just think they're beautiful and you know the the hands work with that rainbow as well as it's, it's literally the same colors it's probably the same collection here's what I see as being aside from the quality issue although if you buy the higher end fabric in Joanne a lot of it is almost as good as what you would get in a quilt store um, but to me the the biggest difference between shopping in Joanne versus a quilt shop online in person whichever the big difference is that Joanne is mostly just um, like bolts of fabric so it's just all up there and your job then is to put stuff together which I think is hard I mentioned that earlier whereas when you shop in a quilt store or uh, one of these online quilt shops like you know I um, like I work with fat quarter shop and absolutely gorgeous stuff beautiful lines and when you shop from them everything is presented as the fabrics within a full line and I think Joanne really misses the mark and the target by not incorporating more of that type of product line into their own offerings so in other words so when you go to Joanne you're just buying like random <laughs> Like random stuff you know whereas if you buy from a quilt store you can buy within a collection and if you buy within that collection it's all designed to go together and so it makes your project and quilting life a lot easier because you know the things will work um, when you're just having to match it your, yourself from this giant array of stuff it can be a challenge but anyway my uh, typical way of working which is to match a um, fun print with a solid that's how I came up with this and I think that's gonna be really beautiful I don't know what I'm doing yet so but I bought I had bought some of these when I was in last time and when I saw them on sale I got a few more and then added the hands I just really like that I also picked uh, this as a set because again for making the small zippered pouches or bags fat quarters are your friend the day I was in they had zippers on sale so it was um I think it was buy three get two free so I got those I like colorful zips so that's what I bought I will say um Joanne is an expensive place to be buying zippers and uh, I know Waywack has zippers and I haven't ordered from them so I need to go ahead and uh, look into ordering my zippers from them but I typically get these polyester Coates and Clark zippers I like them they're easy on the machine you can literally just sew right over the teeth it's okay uh, they iron well you can press right over top of them and nothing happens so I really like these and I will tell you I typically buy them longer than the project and sew over them and when we make the pouches you'll see what I mean and for me that's just a little bit easier than dealing with the, the tab 
and fitting it in with the tab. So you'll, you'll see when I do that zippered pouch. Also to go with the pouches, I got something I haven't tried before and they are called zippered pulls and they, you know, they weren't cheap, but I thought they were a really cute little accessory notion. So I got those to try out. I especially like this one, of course, but um, yeah, we'll try those and see how they are. I got spray starch. I am telling you, I am a convert to using spray starch. <laughs> if you haven't used spray starch, I don't know what you're doing with your life. The spray starch is amazing. I got these little um, hangers to try uh, a way to hang wall quilts. I'm still like kind of figuring out how I'm going to hang my quilts on the wall. Uh, so I'm just experimenting. Also, they could be used for curtains. So I am planning on curtains for my office. Right now I'm in my office window. <laughs> so that's coming, um, probably not until the new year, but yeah, we'll be making curtains to go in here. And then I just got some neutral DMC floss. Uh, you know, they were a little thin on the floss. I think they're having uh, just slight issues getting supplies in from China. So, you know, restock your embroidery floss while you're in. It's, you know, it's not an expensive purchase. Just go ahead and get stuff so you have it in your stash. And then you have it if you need it. I picked up some Grow Green ribbon because I like these for the little um, tabs on my bags. And I just got this in a cream because that will match pretty much anything. And uh, I got that. And um, the last thing I got was just this little cute tabletop Christmas tree. So I picked that up and I will tell you, I love these little artificial trees because they wear well. You can use them year after year and you don't have to water anything. That's everything that I picked up in Joanne's this week. It was two different trips, but I just showed you everything in one video. And uh, yeah, I've got just tons of fun sewing projects on deck for you coming up. I am super excited to get these things made and filmed for you. I'm so ready to just kind of, I want, I don't want to say buckle down because that sounds like it's a job. It is kind of my job because make, making the videos, this is my job, <laughs> but um, I just want to immerse myself in Christmas crafts and things that are uh, pleasant and sweet and pretty and take my mind off of the really serious things that are happening out there in the world. <laughs> I'm just going to create my own space zone of peace and happiness and uh, I encourage you to do the same. That's today's video. I appreciate you watching. I hope you saw some stuff you really liked and that got you inspired to dig through your fabrics and get your stuff out and get your Christmas crafting going. And uh, yeah, make sure that you are um, eagle eyes and watching because lots and lots of really fun things are headed your way. And as always, I appreciate you and your watching the videos means so much to me. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.